So what we're talking about is over 150 million tons of coal per year being strip mined in Wyoming and Montana and then coming through Oregon and Washington on 30 coal trains per day. These are uncovered coal trains spewing toxic coal dust and diesel pollution about a mile and a half long every single day, 365 days of the year. Now these coal trains would be coming through dozens of communities in the Pacific Northwest from Spokane through the iconic Columbia River Gorge, Vancouver, Longview, communities up and down Puget Sound, as well as right here in the city of Portland. In fact, here in Portland, we'd be looking at 12 coal trains per day polluting Portland neighborhoods. But these coal companies have a big problem on their hands, as we can see from the size of the crowd here. They have no idea how hard we will fight to protect our health, to protect our clean air and water, and to fight for environmental justice. As many of you know, Oregon and Washington are two states that are literally leading the nation in shutting down our only coal-fired power plants because they are bad for our lungs, they're bad for our water, and they're bad for our climate. If coal is too dirty to burn here, it is simply unacceptable to be shipping it overseas to China. As you can see from all the banners around us, there is a growing movement called the Power Pass Coal Coalition, and many of you today here, individual citizens who are fighting hard and we are winning. I want to recognize some of these amazing groups we have the Sierra Club, Greenpeace US, Climate Solutions, Friends of the Columbia Gorge, Rising Tide, Oregon Physicians for Social Responsibility, and Fighting Strip Mines, the Western Organization of Resource Councils. We also have the Waterkeeper Alliance Conference going on right now here in Portland. The Waterkeeper Love. And there are water keepers across the West who are fighting to protect their water bodies, their rivers, their sounds, their lakes from coal export, including keepers for the Spokane River, the Columbia River, Puget Sound, North Sound Bay, Lake Pend Oreille, as well as uh, the Cook Inlet Keeper in Alaska. Right here in Oregon on the Coos Bay, we also have Coos Bay Water Keeper. <laughs> So we have an amazing lineup of speakers this afternoon, uh, both local and regional as well as international speakers, and of course one of the most preeminent national environmental fighters, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. So to get us started, it is my privilege to introduce the chair of the Multnomah County Commission, Jeff Kogan. He is a lifetime community activist. His accomplishments include reforms to the business income tax, growing fresh food for the Oregon Food Bank on surplus county land, as well as fighting crucial efforts to support our returning veterans. Please join me in welcoming Jeff Kogan. Hi everyone, what a great turnout. Thanks for coming out. So a core part of Multnomah County's mission is protecting the public health. And we take that role seriously. That's why we've been working hard to improve our local air quality by reducing diesel emissions. It's why we've been working to protect our residents by reducing toxics like BPA and benzenes. And it, yeah, well, that deserves it. Come on, reducing toxics, come on. And it's also why we've partnered with the city of Portland to make the most ambitious climate action plan in the country. And I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge my partner and environmentalist partner at the city of Portland, Commissioner Amanda Fritz, who's here with us right now. And protecting the public health is why I'm here today. I am deeply concerned about these plans to ship 150 tons, a million tons of coal a year through the Columbia River Gorge and through our community. If it's approved, we're talking about as many as 
50 coal trains a mile and a half long going through the Columbia River Gorge and through Multnomah County every day. 50 coal trains, 75 miles of coal trains. It's going to turn the Columbia River Gorge National Scenic Area into the largest coal chute in the nation. And it's going to be exposing our local communities to significant health risks. Coal is dirty. It's, it's full of toxic chemicals like mercury and arsenic. And don't believe that just because these coal trains are passing through our community that we don't have a health risk. We do. The simple fact is coal dust leaks off these trains in large quantities. BNSF Railway says each coal car leaks off 500 pounds of coal dust in each trip. And we're talking about tens of thousands of coal cars going through our community. This is nasty stuff, this coal dust. Just last week, PGE said that they didn't want a coal terminal near one of their power plants because the coal dust is too dirty. But just, just think about that for a second. Just think about that for a second. Coal dust is too dirty to be next to a power plant and they want to put it through our neighborhoods. Is that okay? No. That's a terrible idea. And I haven't even talked about global climate change yet. Climate change is something we care about in Oregon, and we've made real progress in reducing our greenhouse gas emissions. And in just 10 years, we will be rid of our only coal-fired power plant in Oregon. That's yeah. tremendous progress. Yeah. Lots of states are starting to cut down on coal power because it's so dirty. But if we simply export this coal to Asia, we're not getting any real environmental benefits. We're exporting the pollution. We can't. That's what these coal pro export facilities are going to do. It's going to ensure a future of climate destabilization, wreaking havoc on people and ecosystems around the globe. Is that the future we want? No! no. And it's not the future we need either. We can stand up and we can stop this. And I see all these people here today, I know we can stop this. Yeah. Now you're going to hear a lot about how we have to do this because it creates jobs. And it's true that there are some jobs created in this, but we have to be smart about job growth. We can't sacrifice public health for just a few jobs. And remember, we're just talking about a few jobs here. One estimate found that an average coal export terminal facility would create as many jobs as two Starbucks coffee shops. Who wants to sell out their children's future for two couple of dozen jobs? That's not the future we need. That's not the future we need to create. Luckily, we live in Oregon where our governor gets it. Yeah. Governor yeah. Kitzhaber. Yeah. Yeah. Governor Kitzhaber has asked the Department of the Interior to do an environmental impact assessment of what these coal facilities will do to our region. And that is the right thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. We, we need to ask these questions. We need to find what the impact will be to our public health. What it will mean for traffic at rail crossings and freight movement. What it will mean for fish living in our rivers. And what it will mean for people who eat those fish. What's it going to mean for the cancer rates, lung disease, heart disease, asthma, emergency room visits? These are questions that we have a right to the answer to. And we shouldn't take a simple answer that, oh, it's just going to create jobs. We need to know what the impact of these facilities are. That's what we can do. That's what we need to do. Together, we can stop this. Thanks, everyone, for coming out today.